Alrighty guys, welcome to the next lesson. So in this specific lesson, we're going to be talking about basically the, the back testing, the forward testing that went into this specific system. Now, I had a lot of um, back tested results. So um, for the data sheets that I put out for you guys and I'm going to publish, um, it should be in below this this little video um it's going to be worth um the month of the, the specific month of data is going to be from april 23 uh for the, for the start date and then um it's going to end around um for about what is it like uh june july 12 uh that's actually like september i believe um right, october <laughs> I don't know my month. So October. So it's going to be from uh, general about a couple of um, four months um, for this data set. So the data set for this one is going to be the instrument NASDAQ 100. So all the data points are coming from that specific instrument, um, instrument uh, you know, for um, April 23 to all the way up to October 8, 2020. So that's about April, May, June, July, August, September. It's about like six months worth of data. So um, going on with like the, the sets of data I took from uh, basically previous back testing results using um, kind of just an algorithm to find out um, at those specific dates if it fit my pattern. And then as well as using markups as well as I, you know, I, I did a lot of markups, extremely a lot of markups for that point. So I, I took my data points as well from, from markups. But anyway, so um, instrument has like 100, you can see here, you got the instrument, the risk reward, the risk, the reward, the entry date and the direction. So on um, the standard risk for this specific system, so the mechanical level scalping system, it's going to be at um, 0.30%. So a little bit more than a quarter percent of risk. So you're going to see the risk is going to be um, very, uh, it's going to be the same for, for this. So 0.30% for all of it. All right. And then you have the, the reward, which is 0.60%. Um, the entry um, for this first one and then entry date and then the direction. So uh, for the first one, you can see that NASDAQ 100, um, the, the whole risk reward was 2.2R, um, risking 0.30%. So that's giving me a reward of about, of about 0.60% um, with an entry date of um, April 23, 2020, um, direction long. So you can kind of just see like just a bunch of data sets from coming up until these, all of these months. You can see 13R right over here with a risk of 0.30% um, and an average return of 4% on August 17, 2020, taking it direction short. So all of these data points are coming from um, actual back-tested data. All right, so you can see that the average risk reward is 3.4R coming from those data points. So that's that's pretty good. An average RR is 3.4R. An average data percentage, so an average um, reward percentage um, or just average percentage is 1.04 R, which is pretty good. So on average, on every specific trade, I average about making about 1.1% 1. Um, 1 basically on each specific trade. All right. And so on the, on the right side, you could see, I don't know why this is glitching out with this little thing, but on the right side, you could see that the direction. So how many of my trades were long and short? So you could see that mostly on this data point that most of my trades were taken long on this back test um, data so which which makes sense because um, on this specific instrument which is the NASDAQ 100 it is the um, the index of the tech sector of the stock market so we know that is especially um, you know from April actually from even March from March all the way up to the end of the year we know that the market just went all the way up up every single every single week and every single month so it makes sense on you know how most of my positions were long on that data point and then about 43 um, trades were short so the whole trades that um, all the data points for those six months was about 128 trades which is very standard for a lot of systems um, 128 trades is I think I think the minimum for um, for most systems for for you to gather you know assert like a lot of data points and to see exactly how uh, especially over six months exactly how the system works with different kind of months and different kind of market types if it goes through different market types during that time um so i mean the, I, i've gone over probably more than a hundred yeah way more than 100 trades but i've only been able to um, put over 100 trades on my back tested and, and both of my back tested group studies um, just because like there it's just so much I have so much entries and I have to put so much stuff so I have it in, the, in, in my back end um, for my purposes but um, you know if people really want to see like the hundreds of data data points I can go ahead and add it but it's gonna take a lot of work um, 
to put all the data points and then chart it out as well. Uh, but I do have it in my back end. Um, but for, you know, kind of um, systematic purposes, like the reason why I'm showing you guys this is, you know, to show you guys how the system works and, you know, um, why it's really important to have back tested results on a particular on your particular system and for tested results and to exactly know what kind of the st what statistics, excuse me, what kind of the what is it, what are the statistics of the system saying and how can you improve on it and what does it say about your system? All right, so right over here, we have the risk of ruin. So the risk of ruin is basically, um, it's a percentage of drawdown telling you that, you know, what percentage would it take for you to meet a specific amount of risk of ruin? So either 100% risk of ruin, which is basically you blow your account, or 10% risk of ruin, which is basically 10% max drawdown, 20% max drawdown, 30%, et cetera. So on this, uh, it'll take 330 trades, 300. Um, 330 straight losses, risking about 0.30% on each specific um, trade to meet full account ruin, which is, that's a lot of trades, not gonna lie, like, it's gonna be very, very hard for even, like, uh, the person who wants to just basically, like, trade really aggressively to reach full account ruin, so it's gonna take 330 straight losses, if you do, then, I don't know, like, maybe you're not even trading, maybe you're just freaking gambling or just doing something retarded, but, you should not meet 330 straight losses. That's like, for me, like that's unquanti unquantifiable. Like there's no way a trader can do that unless like he's just gambling and he goes into like a really, I don't know, just a really bad kind of trade with using like Martingale systems or something like that. So um, yeah, it will take about 330 straight losses to meet full account ruin. And then there's gonna be a less than a 0.097% chance that you will blow the account so very small percentage not even a, a percent that it's going to be like it's a zero basically a 0 0.09 percent so very slightly um, and then i calculated the risk of ruin basically on this specific formula if you guys are interested um on um, how i calculated that Let's just put that real quick it's kind of bothering me All right. So anyway, sorry. I'm I'm a, such a perfectionist on that. Okay. So um, and then right now, right below that, you have the cumulative R. So the R multiples of um, you know, basically the the the, the trades. So you can see one, two, three, four, up to 125 trades. And then basically on the vertical standpoint, you can see kind of the the R multiple. So 50 R, 100 R, 150 R, 200 R, 250, 300, 450, 400, 450, and 500. So you can see on the max, it literally almost hit about um, it was close to 100 uh, and to 450 R on 125 trades based on um, this set of data points which is 125 trades on the instrument NASDAQ like 100, which is a lot. 450 R out of 125 trades. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a, extremely a lot. So you could use this data points, even though you're risking about 0.30% on it and you get an average of 1.04%. Based on this backtesting data, you could kind of use it. So if you're creating systems and you're risking about, you know, the minimum 0.30% and then you can think to yourself, okay, so... I think I can I think I can get away with risking about 1% per trade or a half a percent per trade and make about 2% or 3% on the average percentage and then with 450 R over 125 trades like I can make a potential 500 500 500 percent or 1000% returns based on this particular system. Now the reason why I have my risk at set at 0.30% is because of the negative skew, which I talked about in the previous um, lessons. It's because of the negative skew, and it's because that it fits my personality much better. Now I trade a big account, so I don't really need to risk like a lot. Like I'm risking relatively $300 per trade, and so on average I will make about you know 600 maybe. 600 maybe even a thousand sometimes on really good risk reward trades um so i i can manage with that um but for me i haven't really tried to go above that go above 0 0.30 percent risk because number one the negative skew part it'll only take one or two or three losses even though i trade a system which is it's a systematic approach into the markets and i have statistical edges and and edges inside the system i really 
just try to stick at 0.30%. But I ask every single one of you guys, if you really are interested in, in trying to increase risk, even though like the, the system has the strict rules on, on not doing that, then I would just say back test it. All right, so back test it a lot risking about 1% on each trade and seeing your results over a span of 50, I'll say 100 trades, don't do not do 50 trades. You, you, you need to have 100 trades because that is the minimum for most, most systems and, and strategies. So just go over 100 trades and see what are your results for 100 trades and, and just basically map it out like I did. Uh, but for me, I, I, I like my risk being set at 0.30%. It allows me to just basically not be too overly emotional. Like I said, again, the system with risk as well is it's best suited for me. Now, if I risk risking a thousand dollars, which is 1% of my account, there it even more, sometimes even more, it tends to basically, I tend to be a little bit more over emotional about it. And, um, you know, whenever I'm emotional about a trade, I can, you know, even though I have that self-awareness, I can still make mistakes and it can still put me into a point where I don't like being. And so that's why I accumulated this system, particularly personalized for my personality and, and my beliefs um, on the markets and, you know, how I operate on, on my trading. So that's why I have my risk set at 0.30%. It works really well. I, I love having it set at 0.30%. You can see that, um, you know, it has done an average of 1% per trade on per, per trade frame. So it, it, for me, it's, you know, I'm not trying to hit big home runs, but if that's something you want to do and you want to um, kind of experiment with larger risk, um, again, I would just say back test, you know, don't like I have part of the, the system, the trading plan for this particular system, which you guys will see or should have seen um, that you should not increase risk because it's going to take away from the edges. You know, one of the statistical edges is the bet forward testing and back testing data. Um, so it's up to you guys. See exactly what um, fits your personality and see exactly, you know, just back test it extremely a lot and seeing what is, you know, what's useful for you. All right. So, um, yeah, that's basically for the for this specific data point. Now, if we look at the combined version, um, put this a little bit closer. So we have a total 126 trades. Um, you can see the, um, I'm guessing this is the uh, max max um, percentage gains, which is 11.7%, and then the minimum, um, and then the win. So um, you have 108 wins and about 17 losses. So that's actually, like, based on this back-tested data pull, that's, that's really good. So you have an 86% win rate with a 30% loss. That's extremely good. You have an average risk-reward of 3.14R, um, and then you have a system quality number, which is one of what Van Tharp teaches. And I think every systematic trader should keep an account um, of having an SQ, SQ and above two. Uh, because again, a system quality number is telling you how good your system is on, on, the, on the part of a long-term perspective. Um, and then the, um, and, and, um, the SQN, NSQN is 7.50. Um, you have the risk 0.30% per trade. Total percentage returns from 128 trades is 133.5 percent return so based on this data point on an average of 1.4 percent um 1.04 percent per trade you'll make a a um out of 128 trades you'll make about 1 133.5 percent returns which is pretty good with having your risk being um, set at 0 0.30 percent though so that's pretty good based on this specific um data point uh data points um and then total percent loss from losers basically the max draw that max draw down was about um 0.5 percent so one of the reasons why i like having my um my rest set at 0 0.30 percent is because the, the key concept of of scalping All right so the negative skewness if you lose if you win you're going to win a lot but when small, but if you lose, you're gonna you're gonna lose very rarely, but big, and potentially destroy all your gains, which potentially could put you in a in a psychological dark zone, and in turn, can make you even lose more money in the long run or in a short run. All right, so for this particular system, you can clearly see um, that the max drawdown is five percent, and the average win rate, I mean the 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 max um, percent gain, percent gain is 11.7 percent. So that's pretty good. That's giving me about more than a two to one ratio right there. Uh, so that's a really good, um, ratio. Um, and basically, you know, the max drawdown that I, that I've lost on that 
was negative 5%. And out of 128 trades, I profited about 133.5%, which is freaking phenomenal. And the profit factor percentage based on the percentage of, of the data points, it's going to be 26.17, which is pretty good as well. Um, so you can see here on the right side, you see the average percentage, uh, per average percent, percent, excuse me, <laughs> I'm starting right up here. So the average percent per trade, so you got, you know, all the way up to 113. So you can see that it's it just kind of ranging. It goes up to 2%, but, um, you know, break even, half a percent, a little bit of break even, break even, break even, um, you know, a little bit, this is 1%, 2% right over here. And the highest that it ever went to was about 12, uh, actually 11, around 11%, almost 12% right over here. So the average tends to kind of stick at 1%, as you can see right over here, which is why the average percent, percent, um, is 1.14 percent, uh, which is actually, excuse me, it's actually 1.04 percent. I just did the math in my head. I don't know why it was 1.4 or 1.14. Oh well. But anyway, so this is where um, you know how it looks like on a chart. All right. So going below is a trade sequence plot. So basically, the number of trades and um, you know just plotted into like all the percent percent gains that you could see. So you could see that, um, you know, in the beginning of the data point, you could see that there's a lot more trades placed, um, a lot more play, um, trades placed with bigger percentage. And then as it started, you know, going with, um, you know, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 trades, you could see that the uh, data points starting to squeeze and shorter and shorter and shorter, um, which one of the reasons that you could see this kind of indication is again um, you have maybe different market points different market conditions where you know you have a really hot market where these data points are spread out to very very relatively high percent percent gains and then whenever you have more um, trades um, you know one of the indications could be again you have uh, different market chains and you know your your plots are going to be much more smaller than they usually were and much more plotted at a specific average instead of it being all spread out which is pretty good i mean uh, you know you would want you don't want your your trade plots to be literally like all over the place negative one negative two four six eight ten fourteen sixteen fourteen giving you kind of a random number you will relatively want to have an average on the trade sequence plot an average percent because then you can find consistency with that average and finding you know an average of that of that of that system and then you know exactly you know what to expect you know you're not looking i mean you're not you know, everyone wants to hit a home run, but you know, you know exactly that if you don't hit a home run, what is your average percent return per trade? And you know, relatively, like the average is going to be one percent. And if the trade sequence plot was literally all over the place, you wouldn't have that specific average number in your head quite, quite as uh, I would say, um, quite strict. You know, you would have random data points all over the different percentage, and then it'll be much harder to find consistency at a certain percent. Um, if that makes sense. Um, and going to the right side, cumulative um, percentage. So you can see here on a number of 113 trades, sort of 0%, slowly grinded all the way up. So this is a really healthy trend going all the way up to 120% of returns um, right over here, which is um, technically 133%. So right at that point. Um, and then trade sequence over cold market. So this is over less than about less than 100 trades and then you can see here just example mar examples of a market change that affects rr and percentage but not in a way where you're in net negative um from s about what is it uh june yeah june 30th to 2022 august 2022 um, august 2020 um so you can see these these data sequence plots where you know with this line the average is coming down so that could be a reason why you know, you have, you know, maybe a market time, a, a point a month where you're having really spread out gains and, a, and a, then a point where it starts squeezing in and you're having less um, percent gains, um, which, again, could be a, it, it's a good thing. It, relatively on a, on a long um, standpoint, it's a good thing because you can have like a really good average to stick by. But also, again, you want to hit home runs. You want to have really good winners. So, um, you know, when you, whenever you see this, there can be different kind of indications or different kind of reasons why. Um, but for me, um, looking at my, my testing, I know that for a fact that it's by, you know, examples of market chains where, you know, usually in the summer, you're going to see a, a lot of um, very high volatility kind of trade setup and really good returns. And then back into like, you know, after the summer and fall, you're going to see kind of markets just start to slow down a little bit and having your, your trade sequence plot kind of just squeeze in and making it have a more of a, 
um, stay at a, at a specific average. So the average for this is 1.4%. Um, so um, staying at that specific average. Um, so for, for the cumulative um, percent number, you can just see kind of like starting out of 125 trades, it just slowly grants all the way up to about 133% right over here. So in the, in, this is just the data point. So all the way down to 100 and <clears throat> 225 trades right over here. So yeah, that is the um, the Nasdaq 100 um, study group for the back tested results. Let's go ahead and, and look for the uh, and look at the Forex study group. All right, let's go right over here. Okay. So this is the mecha mechanical level scalping system study group for Forex. So coming into the right side, you can see um, basically the direction, the overall direction. So you can see long, 62, short, 47. So relatively out of this period of, um, it's not showing the date for some reason. I have to get a little bit closer. Yeah, here we go. So from April to all the way um, to August, it's given me about, um, so about like three or four months. I've went long most of the majority of the time um, than short. And then so going to the right side, you can see the cumulative um, percent returns. So starting off with one and zero, all the way up to 100 and, uh, 109. You can see that it's in a strong, good, healthy trend. Not really unambiguous toward the upside where you're seeing insane out of short periods of trades, but over a span of 100 trades, I think that's relatively healthy right there. Average percent per trade, you can see that, you know, spanning over 106 trades it's it's ha you can see an average you can see literally an average from you know it, it bounces clearly really good at the zero percent line right over here and then it likes to stay um right above the one percent and two percent line you can clearly see that average right there and then on, on like these other later trades you can see that it spiked all the way up to seven percent and six percent um average per trade going a little bit down to the right Excuse me. I don't know what the what was the voice crack. Excuse me. So going to the right, you see the sum of RR by pairs. So you could see that you know um, the the results were back tested by several pairs. Um, so CHF, CHF, GPY, Euro AUD, Euro CAD, Euro GPP, Euro NZD, Euro USD, JP, JP AUD, JP CAD, JP CHF, JP JPY, JP NZD. Um, JPUSD and USDJPY. So you can see that the average R for CHFJPY was 5.1 R. The average R for Euro AUD was 2.67 R. The average R multiple for Euro CAD was 9.4 R. Euro JP not 8.5 R. Euro NZD 0 R. So no, <laughs> literally 0 R. No R at all. Euro USD 25.2 R. JP AUD 10.5 R. JP CAD 10.4 R. JP CHF negative one, JP GPY insane amount 143R, JP NZD 13R, JP USD 72R, and USD JPY 88.3R. 80, 80, so coming out of those data points, you can see that which which particular um, instruments or which particular pair, excuse me, um, the system has been performing really well at those specific months, and you can clearly see that JP GPY um, was basically the winner for this for for this specific data points from all the way up to um, April to yeah April to um, to like mid summer you can see that JP JPY gave us the most executed risk to reward or multiples so that that's that's really good so it's it's always good to have kind of a um, even though you you really want to kind of like have a, a level playing field it's still good to see kind of a a pair that that is doing much more better than any of those other pairs because it's giving you um, an indication where okay this system works really well for that specific pair could be different reasons why maybe volatility maybe there was more news events maybe there was more mechanical setups on that specific time frame or, or etc and so you could use that information to kind of create your own edge within the system even even though the system has its own edges you could create your own personal edge and look at those look at that specific instrument and see okay what could i do better um why is this system working so well on that specific pair and kind of just reverse engineer and see what you could do um and how can you improve on that and the risk of ruin so the risk of ruin based on a 0.30 percent risk it'll take about 330 
330 straight losses to me full account ruin, which is, you know, same as the other one. And this is just basically the, the calculation, the formula right over here. So um, basically what it determined is less than 1% to meet 100% account ruin. So the data result is 0.08%. So um, less slightly than, than the, um, lesser than the, uh, the NASDAQ 100 study group. So for this, it's 0.08% uh, percent, um, percent chance of meeting 100% account ruin. So relatively really low, basically less than 100%. I mean, less than 1%, excuse me. Um, looking at the combined um, information, You can see here, total 109 trades, max 24, minimum negative one, win 93, loss 16. So you can see the win rate right over here is 85%. The average R multiple is 4.35 R, so it's actually slightly larger than the NASDAQ 100 back test the results. And then the losses were 15%, um, so a little bit bigger, I think like 2% bigger than on the NASDAQ 100. Um, the max ex execution R was was um, 24. The minimum was negative one. So that's what I like about this system. I love, I love seeing that that particular result right there. Um, the standard deviation out of the R multiples is 4.3. The average is 3.57. The system quality number is 8.61. So really good. A very good, very good system quality number based on the back tested results. The NSQN is about 8.24 right there. So the average R 3.5, win loss ratio 5.8. And I'm wondering if, I'm pretty sure I put the average win rate, right, um, win loss ratio. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I did. So uh, on the NASDAQ 100 data points, I put win loss ratio 6.35. I, I was just making sure that I did, I put that. Um, but anyway, so win loss ratio 5.8. So um, less, just a little bit slightly off from the NASDAQ 100, the average percent is 1.07%. So, um, you know, the NASDAQ was 1.04% Forex beating, beating it. Um, the total percent gain is 116.69%, one, which is pretty good. That's a really good return. Uh, I believe the NASDAQ 100 was 133% return, but the, the NASDAQ had slightly more trades. So the NASDAQ had about 133 trades, um, 100, I think 122 trades. Let me just check real quick. Yeah, 126 trades, and then the um, the Forex study group only had 109, uh, but it's still pretty good. And I think um, if I put in more trades, more data points, I, I I do think that I do think that the Nasdaq would be slightly more um, better than the Nasdaq 100 back testing results because of just the 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 results that I'm seeing right now. Um, but yeah, over than that, uh, max drawdown 4.8%, uh, profit factor 24.3, so that's a percentage, so 24.3 is really freaking good. Um, <clears throat> you can see the rolling average risk to rewards, so, or um, rolling average or multiple out of the um, 55 trades. So you can see just, it, it's an average, you can see the average staying at three to four R right over here. So that's, that is the um, specific average for the um, R multiples. And then you can see the cumulative R, so that's, um, that's particularly something that y you want you love to see you know very good trend trendy cumulative or you, you don't want to see something like really crazy where you have like six or seven or eight trades um where it literally just goes all the way up to like 20 r 30 r 40 r and then the next couple of trades you see like a slight decline you know this is a really healthy system really healthy back testing results this is exactly what you want to see on your back testing system or strategy just a really good cumulative r you know from 100 from 1 to 55 goes to about 160 i believe almost 180 r right there Um, and then for the trades we can plot, you can see that this is um, this is a little bit more um, kind of sp not spread out, but more squeezed in into into together. You can see that the Nasdaq 100 was a little bit more um, kind of spread out because of volatility. So for the forex, you can see less volatility, so that's giving you an an implication that yeah, there's less volatility here, and it's giving you more of a good average right over here. So from zero to about um, excuse me, from zero to all the way up to about ten. So that's giving you an average point of from like around zero to five right there. And then you see that the line right over here is slightly increasing. So that's a healthy kind of a um, um, implication. You can see here that Forex uh, out of the Forex trades 
um, much more or less volatile where you're not going to see insane increases um, that you would on the Nasdaq 100 with like 25, 26 or 6 or 7, 8 um, percent, which um, it could be either like, I guess you could say it could either like be kind of a one, maybe a con as well that you won't get really insane R multiples, but also a safe point where if you really don't want to be trading volatile instruments, you could just trade um, Forex and, you know, relatively get an a good average risk reward um, or multiples or average percent gain and not, you know, looking to see something really crazy on that particular system over a long period of time. Um, yeah, examples of less trades and or captured as market conditions change. Um, April 2020 to August 2020, even with less RR captured, so managed to make to have a, um, a good win rate and profitability, which is true. The win rate is about 80, um, 85% with a um, average RR of 3.57R and an average um, percent gains for 1.07%. So you can see right over here all the all the data points right over here. So it's all the way up to 109. 109. So um, yeah, that's just basically the these two um, specific study groups. So the forex side, right up here, you can see all the all that specific pairs: JPCAD, JPCAD, UZJPY, every, um, risk reward, risk, um, RR reward, date, direction. You can see the total percent gains right over here is 116.69%. Um, so, yep, just went over the Forex um, backtesting results for the system and then the NASDAQ 100 scalping results. So let's go ahead and go over quickly the, um, the four testing results. So this is the four testing results, just a lot of data points because um, the four testing was, was um, f basically more had way more trades than both the the back testing and back testing data points so um this one was a much more easier much more easier to kind of just point out in data in data sheets because i could just export all my all my trades and while like uh with the back testing you have to kind of um basically manually manually do everything so it's a bit more harder um but anyway so these are all the data points you can see kind of the dates if i if i go a little bit closer Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see the dates right there. Actually, no. I think it's just glitching. Um, Excel, whenever you're dealing with a lot of numbers, Excel, Excel just kind of glitches out a little bit. But yeah, so here are the dates. So they're not like random dates. They're just dates right there. So um, let me go ahead and scroll down. So you can see just a bunch of trades, um, gold, NASDAQ 30. You can see that the most traded instrument was a NASDAQ 100 on this particular account. So you can see the profit right over here, the, the, the I believe the date, or actually the duration, the profitability, um, comment, gain, instrument, which direction I took, the date, the entry point, and then whenever I exited, So this is over, I believe, 400 trades. So it very uh, like a lot of, basically a lot of, a lot of um, lot of trades. So um, almost like three times more than the back tested results from the forex side, and as well as the Nasdaq 100 instrument. Um, and then you can see here the um, the full out results. So the gain was 134, um, 136,468. Um, the max drawdown was 3,845. The average, um, kind of the average. Um, I guess you could say the average expectancy, you could say this is the expectancy, is 290, uh, 290.97. The standard deviation is 1,473. Um, and the profit factor of the system is 9.6. The system quality number is 4.2. So um, it's not as high as it was from the back testing results. But, you know, this could be, you know, one of the reasons because um, you have way more trades. So the more trades you take, more volatility, the more risk you are. Um, even though you're taking more winners, you're still um, just basically putting the system out with, with a huge amounts of trades. So, um, you know, with the system calling number, it, it makes sense for the system calling number to be um, quite less than the back tested results, which was about nine, eight or nine for the system quality number. 
but again it's still above two so that's really great the win 292 the loss is 177 the win um win loss ratio is 1.67 so it could definitely be better i'm not gonna lie the win loss ratio could definitely be better the win rate is 62.2 percent so um you know definitely could be better from compared to the back testing data points from being 80 percent and you know one of the reasons why the win rate is a little bit more um way less about about 20 around actually i'll say 18 percent less than the actual um than the actual back testing results is number one um there's a reason why you have to back test and forward test at the same time on that particular system you can not expect back just to back test and expect your forward testing results to be exactly your back testing results because that's completely false that's why systematic trades that's why portfolio managers both use back testing and then once they have that system in place they put it out into a, a forward testing algorithm or etc and seeing the results so you can see the results are you can see that so you can see some similarities, but you can see also that the importance of why you need to forward test and not just basically go live. Um, so the win rate is still good. Not going to lie, a 62.2% win rate is pretty good. Um, at loss rate of about 37.8%. Um, I still won more than I lost. I still have a really good system quality number. My profit factor is really good. Uh, my average um, expectancy could definitely be better. Um, and then the gain... The overall gain is it's much more better than than before. So it's a, it's over one hundred thirty six thousand four hundred, um, basically one hundred thirty six k right there. Um, the average profit chart, whatever you could see, um, it just kind of ranges from from the spe specific point. The average percent gain, you could see from the out of four hundred sixty nine trades, you kind of see just uh, you know relatively kind of uptrend, kind of a trend right over here from twenty. 60%, 100%, 120% right over here. Most traded asset, clearly NASDAQ 100 because um, that's my specialty. So let's go ahead and just combine all that information and formulate it into actual um, quantifiable results. So total, I put 205, max 4.15, um, 4.15, uh, I believe this is um, percent. So 4.15%, 4, 4 I believe that's... What it's saying right up here, a minimum 2.08%. Yeah, cause, so this is this is the percent gains because I was looking at the data points right over here. So that's, I believe that's data point, uh, that's percent. Um, so win, 137. Losses, 66. So about a 67% win rate, slightly better than over the um, courses of action, courses of 400 trades from the from the four testing results right over here. Uh, you can see that the um, standard deviation is 0 0.77, average 0 0.26. So yeah, this, these are percentages. Um, you know, one of the reasons why it looks like it's it's like really freaking low, it's because these are percent gains, not or or multiples. So you can see, you can know that you know that from the back testing results, the or or multiples are, was about two to three R, um, and then for an average of about uh, one percent. So the average here is zero point twenty six percent, which is could could be definitely way better, but um, it is what it is. Um, and then system quality number is about 4.8, which is pretty good. Profit factor percentage over 200 trades is just basically slightly almost two. Max drawdown is 4.5, 4.15%. Minimum is 2.08%. Win loss ratio is 2.05%. You can see the rolling average percentage right over here over, um, yeah, 205, 205 trades. You can see an average of that. So it goes from the average of um, 0 0.20 to about uh, max to an average of 0 0.60 right over here for like the, the overall average. And right now it's like staying at 0 0.40 right there. Um, cumulative or um, cumulative percentage, you can see from uh, um, 55 trades, very healthy trend. You know, you're not seeing any kind of implications where the system, any red flags for the system. You go over 55 trades, you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25%. Really good, really good kind of... Um, you know, really healthy trend right there. Trade sequence, uh, trade sequence over 200 trades. You can see that it's a little bit spread out than normal, which implicates like the you know the level of, of, of volatility that I was trading. You know, Nasdaq 100 is a really volatile instrument, so I'm actually surprised that my drawdown, my max drawdown, is only 4.15 percent. Um, you know, even though I was trading a really heavily um, volatile instrument, so that just kind of gives you the implication of how well the system works whenever you're trading volatility where you, you know, if you lose, you lose small, and whenever you win, you win big, and the, the power of compounding, basically. You can see that I made a, over 136K right over here 
out of um, 472 trades and um, the max drawdown was 3.8 percent um, three thousand eight hundred and four uh, three thousand eight hundred and forty five dollars which is about um, four point fifteen percent so you can clearly see that um that you know really really good kind of implications where it's it's not very crazy results where you're going to see like insane um, win rate insane um, risk to reward ratios insane like profit factors like even though the back testing results l looked really really like insane that's what's really important and why i really stress out that whenever you're making your own system or strategy to back test and forward test both because again like <laughs> back testing like whenever you back test your results are not going to be this, like exactly the same from your forward testing and your and your your back testing your forward testing. It, it clearly is is not. I don't think you know any kind of um, approach that you could that you put it will be exactly the same because again, back testing is back testing. You're getting data from from past price action and forward testing is basically forward testing. You're you're taking data from present information and you're taking trades you're going through kind of commissions you have to go through commissions you have to go through spreads you have to go through all these other variables that you would not go with um, back testing so that's why forward testing is extremely important and even though um you know with the forward test forward testing results you're not seeing as insane um and insane like um i would say insane um just insane stuff like insane uh stats that you would see that that we saw on the this the study the the study group for the nasdaq 100 so i'm losing my words right over here even though we're not seeing insane amount of results like this like exactly the same and insane results or insane stats with the forward testing you could still see like you know why why are you creating a system you want to create a system that gives you consistent gains all right giving you consistent compounded gains and giving you a very small drawdown right that's exactly what you want for a system you don't want it to create a system that gives you like literally the the biggest profit in the world um and giving you the risk of ruin of basically almost blowing your account with a 40 percent drawdown or 30 percent drawdown yeah you could probably have a good win rate with very insane max gain but again i'm not doing that I'm not here to hit home runs. I'm here to create profitable long-term systems that's going to basically compound my account. It's giving me literally the smallest amount of risk to make huge wins, to make a lot of money. And that's why the system works. That's why the system works really well. And with the specific risk factor, which is 0.30%, just look at that over 136,000 with, you know, the max drawdown of being 3,845. That's really good. Um, even though I had like a really, um, my, my win rate was not 80%. It wasn't 80%. I was winning about 62.2% on every trade, but whenever I was wrong, I was wrong really small. And whenever I was big, I was big, really, you know, quite big, much bigger than what I lost. Um, so yeah, these are all the, the specific data points. I know I'm rambling a lot. Um, but yeah, all, all the way down to 200 trades, you can see all the data points right over here. I'm going to link all the information below for you guys to just check it out. And kind of just hopefully you guys get more um, just kind of an insight on how systems are supposed to work, how you should kind of formulate your own, your own strategies and systems and how you should go about, you know, basically looking at this. Um, the statistics of it so you're looking for the profit factor the max percent gain the minimum the basically the drawdown percent the win-loss ratio you're looking for basically the the standard deviation the profit factor of the system this is the system quality number you're looking for the risk of ruin which is um something that i didn't put on this um on these data points um you're also looking for you know different different factors that gives you an, an indication of an edge with your system and as well as any kind of um kind of indication that that tells you okay this system there's a very kind of negative skew to the system or there could be a, a very good variable that the system will likely underperform on a particular market condition or you know if i go way aggressive with my risk like risking two percent or three percent there's a very good chance that i could lose with a max drawdown of 10 or 15 or 20 percent 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the the statistics. I'll link everything below for you guys. Let me know if you guys let me know if you guys have any questions or anything else like that. I know I was rambling a lot about um, the statistics and everything like that, but hopefully you know you just you guys just basically look over the results yourself um, and just formulate your own conclusions. And again, um, this is not to kind of um, I I would say like put you out like just just basically. Um, have you guys confused or whatever um, with all these different data points? Um, it's something to kind of just look at the statistics and, you know, know, okay, I need to implement statistics in my trading or in my systems or my strategies because I know it's really important. And I know that, you know, it gives me a, a quantifiable statistical edge. Um, so I'm not going to like I'm not here to, you know, basically confuse the heck out of you guys with all these different data points, which I mean, I, I don't think I sh I don't think, you know, I am confusing people because it, it should be very relatively easy to just look at it because there's not any like really intense mathematical modules into it but um hopefully i i, I made sense in this kind of little video let me know if you guys have any questions and i'll see you guys in the next lesson all right thank you guys so much